So I wrote down a thought here that I want to share with you. I said we must define in detail the services we provide if we want them to feel comfortable giving us referrals long term. We have to, now listen carefully, okay, we have to define in detail, okay, not only the service we provide but the quality of service. See, quite honestly guys and gals, it is many times much easier to deal with somebody you've never seen before and will never see again in real estate. Because see, they can't judge you against anything else you've done. See, you're holding an open house and a buyer walks in and you kind of build a little relationship and you feel good and you take them out three days later and you sell them a house and you could mumble and fumble and stumble and script the whole deal. They don't know the difference because they don't know what you are, what you aren't, what you can and cannot do. But a past client who's already dealt with you knows the difference. So you have to define your service, okay? Let's take this example. What separates you from every other agent in the office when it comes to showing property to a buyer? What makes you good at showing property to buyers? What makes you the person that buyers would want to work with? What makes you a, a magnet of buyers trying to find you because of the quality that you offer? Take a look at listing. What about your listing presentation is so powerful and so strong that it's so much better than anybody else in the office that referrals that come in will want to come to you? What, what about your listing presentation, what all of your existing clients say, are you kidding? My neighbor's going to sell, you got to call Mike Ferry. Your center of influence have to look at what you do and say, are you kidding, listing property? This guy's the best. See, it's the definition of the service. For me, and we'll talk about this more in a later program, it was defining what I called a plan of action. And the plan of action was nothing more than what I would do for a seller if I listed their home to get their home sold. See, it's the definition of the service. See, in real estate, if you don't know what you're doing, you can work with anybody. But if you don't know what you're doing, you can't work with your past clients and centers of influence time and time again because they'll catch on to the fact you don't know what you're doing. Watch this example. I had a mastermind group I belonged to for many years, and it was a wonderful group. It was probably, I'm going to guess, eight or ten prominent speakers. If I mentioned their names, you would know all of them. And I wouldn't do that because it was embarrassing. And we had many, many discussions about the business, how to work with people like yourself, how to train you, etc. And I had come up with this idea that I thought these action workshops that I do would be a great way of helping a real estate person build a long-term business. So I said to the group, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an action workshop where I see the people day after day after day after day and teach them how to sell. And this group said, are you kidding? I said, no. I, why would you say am I kidding? They said, why would you want to go back and see the same people time and time again? I said, because I think what I have to offer has value to them. I think the service I have could help them build their business. I think that makes sense. Now, believe it when I tell you that none of them supported what I was going to do. They all thought I was crazy. Now, here we are 25 years later. Half of them are no longer speakers, not speaking in real estate if they do speak at all. They all have nice little businesses, and because of people like you and the service I offer and the respect we give to each other, I have one of the largest businesses in this industry in the nation. And it's all coming from past clients and centers of influence. As I said to start this particular program, if you're not a past client, we want you as a client. We want you to take these services we offer, apply them to your business, build your business, just like we want you to apply your services to your buyers and sellers to build your business, and then we have a long-term relationship. I wrote down a thought here, okay? If you're going to work your past clients and centers of influence, believe me when I tell you, you can't be afraid to take charge and be in control. You know, we all say there's four basic personality styles, the driver personality, the amiable, the expressive, and the analytical. Well, it has been deemed through testing that I am a driver personality style. Therefore, to take control isn't very difficult. If your past clients see that you cannot take charge of a transaction, they're not going to give you referrals. If your centers of influence see you as a weak, you know, mealy-mouthed, wishy-washy salesperson, they're not going to give you referrals for future business. See, if I have well-defined services, if I know what I'm doing, 
and I'm confident that I can do it, and I respect myself and I respect the person giving me the referral, then I can take charge and be in control. And if I take charge and I'm in control, watch, I win. I wrote down, that's what people want, and that's what they will pay for, and they will refer people to you if you will take charge and take control. How do you take charge, take control? Let's go back to building skills. Building skills is the answer to taking charge and taking control past clients, centers of influence. But I also wrote down, with your past client centers of influence, it is absolutely imperative. Now listen to me, and I want you to listen to this carefully. It's imperative that you do not ever do anything but tell them 100% the truth during a transaction. Now, in real estate, there are real estate people that don't tell the truth. Now, I know that's hard to believe. I'm not talking to you. I know that would never happen to you. There are real estate people that don't tell the truth. They walk into a seller. Well, oh, I can get you 500000 for this home, no problem. It's a lie. Oh, yeah, I'll do whatever it takes to get this home sold. It's a lie. Oh, I advertise all the time. It's a lie. See, people in selling, not all of them, some of them lie all the time. If I'm going to build a long-term relationship with a past client center of influence, i got to look them right in the eye and tell them the truth. Mary and Bob, you gave me a referral, which I appreciate. I went and talked to the Smiths. They want 100000 more for their home than what it's worth, and I told them it would never sell at that price, and that's the truth. Now, I appreciate the referral, but I want you to know why I did not list the property. They go, oh, thanks. Gosh, I'm glad you told me the truth. But on a listing presentation, if I get a referral, i got to tell them the truth. Because, see, by telling the truth to these people, you never have to worry about what you've said previously, never have to worry about what you're going to say next. But, see, if you're just cold calling people and picking people up off the street, I mean, if you don't tell them the truth, they don't know the difference, and you can build a business that way, but is it a business built on a solid rock foundation that can do high volume? And the answer is no. I wrote down, if you're going to really work your center of influence past client list, you have to prove that you're willing to outwork the competition. You have to prove that not only are you willing to do it, but you can do it. And you do that by displaying the services and how you operate and perform those services. See, I, I had this theory when I started building this business 30 years ago, because there were a lot of people doing what I was doing 30 years ago, and I kept saying to myself, I'm going to outwork them. I'm going to outwork them. I'm going to outwork them. The clients that I'm working with are going to know that I'll work harder. You may not like what I say. You may not like what I do. But honest to goodness, I'm going to work harder than anybody else in this industry to prove that I can build this business. Watch, you can do the same thing. It isn't exhausting. It isn't mentally exhausting. It's just performing and giving to people what they deserve, which is good service. Watch, outwork the competition. If you develop the reputation among this group of 250 to 500 people that you're going to outwork the competition and that you can provide results, guess what? You'll get more referrals than you ever imagined. It's exciting to watch. I wrote down this thought. To keep momentum in your favor, and to keep the, the system working, you have to talk to everybody on your list a minimum four times a year. And then four times a year, you have to send them a short letter or a postcard. Eight times a year, they have to have contact with you. It's that repetition. They know you're in real estate. Now, watch this. People say to me, well, I've got friends that are you know, in, in other businesses, and they referred their friends to other realtors and not to me. And I went, you're kidding. No, it's happened to me a lot. Do your friends know that you're in real estate? Well, I told them once. I said, wait, wait, wait a minute. You have a close friend that's an attorney. You have a close friend that works the grocery store, that owns a gas station. Right. And you told them once that you were in real estate. Right. And they referred their business to some other realtor. Right. So they think of you as a friend. Right. And I can't believe they did that to me. Wait a minute. Freeze on that thought. They're thinking of you as a friend they don't think of you as their realtor because you don't remind them on a repetitive basis that you are their friend, but you're also their realtor. See, they have to create a connection between the two. See, you've created the friendship with your friend that owns the gas station, but you haven't created the connection that you're also the realtor. So you don't call, you don't call a friend and say, hey, do you know Chuck, the gas station guy? You say, do you know Chuck, my friend? See, if you're going to refer people to Chuck, you don't say, Chuck, my friend. You say, Chuck, the gas station guy. They have to refer to you as Mike, the real estate person. 
People do business with people that they know, they trust, they believe in, they can work with, but they have to know the business you're in. If you're embarrassed about being in real estate, guess what? It doesn't work. So watch, eight times a year, you're gonna be in touch with these people. Four times by phone, four times by mail. A short little postcard. Just wanted to remind you I'm in real estate. Nobody that wants to buy or sell, give me a call. I want to make sure everything's okay with you and your family. Look forward to seeing you. See, if you keep up the communication, you can make it work, okay? Now, here's the interesting challenge that you face. There are certain past clients, if you've been in the business a while, and there's certain people in your center of influence that either communication has broke down or you've lost the relationship or something happened or you got a little spat about something and things aren't the way they used to be. These are all called normal human situations. My belief is when you look at your list with all the names, you look at the ones that maybe the relationship has deteriorated, you gotta have the courage to call them back. Watch this example. You sell somebody a house, and a week before the closing, the interest rates go up, and the appraisal comes in low, and the deal gets a little sideways, and closing costs change, and everybody's a little angry, and there's a lot of emotions involved, and you're on the defense, and they're attacking you because you should give up your commission to pay for the change in the interest rates, and you, I'm not giving them my commission, and the deal finally closes, and there's a little bit of anger, and then you say, well, oh, I can't call them back. They were mad at me. And then three years later, you're driving through the neighborhood, and there's a for sale sign by a competitor on the home that you sold, and they've listed it for 100000 more than they paid for it with somebody else, and you can't believe this. So you knock on the door, and they answer, Hey, Mike, gosh, we haven't seen you for three years. Well, I know, why did you list with Mrs. Jones? Because we never talked to you. See, how much business do we lose because at some point in the relationship, it got a little hazy, a little foggy, a little screwy, and then we didn't follow up. I believe this. Anybody that's ever worked with you in real estate before will work with you again if you maintain the relationship. Let's say something did go wrong on that transaction. It got a little screwy. And you wait and it's closed and you're a little uncomfortable. So you call them back. Hi, this is Mike. I owe you an apology. You're kidding for what? Well, I know the transaction got screwy at the end. I owe you an apology. You know what 90% of them will say? Oh, don't worry about it, Mike. We love the house. Thanks for taking care of us. But if you don't make the call, guess what happens? So therefore, how much business are you losing because the relationship got sideways and you didn't have the courage to follow up? I also made a very important note here that when you're going to ask for referrals from your centers of influence and past clients, you need to be very specific when you ask for referrals. Now, let, let me tell you what I mean by specific. You got a best friend at your tennis club. Okay, and you play tennis once a week with your best friend and your doubles partners and you know he has his job and you have yours and the relationships are going on for years. So you very casually say, hey Jim, who do you know that wants to buy or sell some real estate? And he goes, gosh, you know, I'm, hmm, can't think of anybody at the time. Well, if you think of anybody, you know, don't, don't forget I'm in real estate. Okay, see you next week for tennis at seven o'clock. Watch, that doesn't work. Hey Jim, who do you know on your job that's talking about buying or selling real estate? Who of your neighbors is talking about buying or selling real estate? Who in your family has been talking about real estate? See, when, you, when you're very specific when you ask for referrals, when you're very specific, that takes the person's mind to a specific group of people that they can think about. Who on your job and who at the tennis club and who that you play golf with and who here and who there? See, the more specific you are, the better chance you have. And then the last thing I wrote down, which I think is probably the most important, and I want you to think about this a lot. The last thing I wrote down was this. When you look at your list of centers of influence and past clients, do like my friend on Atlanta did. Really determine which people are most likely going to give you referrals based upon the service you offer and the relationship you have. And once you determine that, I want to make sure that you're extending to them the common courtesy, the good communication, and the good service. And explain to them how you do business. Explain to them how you're going to treat the referrals that you're going to get. Remember, when all else fails, high quality communication and high quality service wins the game. You deserve to have a more predictable, duplicatable business coming from this absolute gold mine. There's no better gold mine in real estate than past clients and centers of influence. Let's start working it, let's start developing it, let's make it work for you. I know that it can.